Okay, hi, hi, Mr. Dickens. Uh, thank, first of all, thank you for joining uh, at such a short notice uh, this this online session. And also yesterday you visited the expo, uh, so really thank you for that. And uh, so as, as we discuss, so we can uh, we will go with those questions accordingly, and uh, you can you can give your response to that. Yes. Uh, yes. Thank you very much to have me here. Welcome back to everybody. And first of all, thank you to the very energetic and dynamic team of Bright Exhibitions, Mr. Moyes and all his uh, uh, very, very dynamic team who have put together this expo. And I'm sure like, like Mr. Dickens and myself, we are all having a great time here. Yes. Where we are, we are separated by physical distance, but uh, you are bringing together uh, virtually. So thank you, Bright Exhibition, for that. Yeah, you're welcome. It's indeed, you know, this is this is one of the advantages which is there where, where we are separated at distance but brought closer through the virtual means that sometimes I possibly, I possibly would not have traveled to West Africa to attend a West Africa Expo. Though Moise for many years, he has been telling me, come, come and attend my Expos, but then to travel for three days and, you know, so sometimes you you get, but here when I had to, so now not only what I got, not only did I attend the Expo, I got the chance to be a part of the expo. So I think you win some and you lose some. And uh, one of the good, and, and see at, at every forum you go, you get, you go for something, but you get one bonus. So the bonus which I got in this expo was the opportunity to meet with Mr. Kasango Dickens Pisa. Okay. Mr. Kasango is the vice president of the Global Council for Promotion of International Trade. He represents Uganda. And uh, he's doing a lot for business promotion in Uganda, interacting with people worldwide. And uh, of course, it's not only for Uganda when he's doing international trade, so he's promoting international trade. So yes. I think we have a few rapid fire questions for, uh, not so rapid because he, he, I'm sure with his depth of knowledge, he'll give us more in-depth answers. So first of all, since we met at the expo, what is your take on the expo? And definitely there are so many other virtual expos which you have been attending. So how do you, what is your take on all these virtual expos and how do you think they are, are they really contributing to the business and well, what is your take? Uh, thank you very much. Grateful to be here. Uh, Dickens, Kasango Dickens Pesa is my name. Uh, Vice President of the Global Council for Promotion of International Trade, running about four companies in Kenya and uh, Uganda, and uh, it's a privilege to actually be here. Uh, yes, uh, coming through yesterday at the expo, I've attended literally several, several expos, and sometimes you, some people just want to ride on to uh, the audience. They're looking for a way they can sell something off, but when you literally do an in-depth uh, listening, you're not, there is no value at to someone putting out hours in their day, someone uh, that is going to forego because Uganda, we have, in, uh, data is way expensive, literally more than the electricity. So by the time someone is foregoing uh, maybe uh, $5 worth of data to stream an event, they literally need to get the value. They need to get value that they are upskilling themselves and then they're positioning themselves to be better people. So coming through yesterday, it was uh, very enlightening. Uh, I came through and I needed to one also understand, okay, it's uh, an expo, but it's being done virtually. It's, it's giving a different mindset to it altogether. But then unique aspects, I, I moved through the hotel, I moved through the people that were suppliers. And uh, part of one of the things that caught my attention is one, they were able to, re uh, let me say, adjust from the traditional way where it's a walk-in to now a, a, a virtual sit a setting that you can be able to walk through, interact, listen through, and then even also meet different people across the globe, not limited only location. And uh, even the mindsets about people, I listened to, to you present even about some of these things and I was amazed. Uh, you broke down how to utilize resources. And I feel every SME, even big multinational businesses, some of their managers do not know some of these things. And we're in a place whereby LinkedIn may avail you certain skilling programs, but you as a person need to, because there's someone, you may never get to the LinkedIn audience 
that follows me. But if I reshare your content, I'm going to learn from you and someone behind me is going to also learn. So it was quite an insightful session. I learned a lot. I even took worth of uh, 10 pages uh, from the whole uh, virtual session. And uh, what I would encourage that if we would have more of these, not one-offs, but we also do probably uh, uh, just interact more and have sessions where we do one-on-ones just with people. And we base those now as benchmarks for the overall expos you're going to be making that we have in between. Maybe if you're going to have it quarterly, can we have in, in between sessions whereby different SME owners, different business owners or managers, they come through, raise questions of their concern because right now everybody's going digital, everybody's going online, but most of them, they don't even know about how to utilize uh, Zoom. How, if you tell them, okay, could you share a screen? It's basics that they're lacking out yet some of you are going to a scenario whereby you need to, if you're going to be a sales personnel, you need to utilize your laptop and, and, and uh, internet, wherever you are. If you're going to do a procurement, if you're going to do procurement, can you literally do the procurement process for your organization without even interacting with physical suppliers or people that are doing this particular transaction? So I feel uh, it's a way to go, but it pre it's presenting an opportunity for us one, me and you, uh, exhibitors and suppliers that I do not need to now be limited by the borders. There's something that uh, the African Development Bank has been pushing where we have a borderless African continent where you can trade, uh, trade. And I feel this is the right time for us to start playing out into these particular things whereby if I need to enlighten myself in a skill, I can contact you wherever you are and I get enlightened. It may be at a cost because yes, there's value for time for from your side, but at the end of the day, it's not going to be much more when I need to do an MBA in that particular uh, skill set. Because now it's, uh, I was actually having a, having a dialogue today with my son and at some point he wanted to be a doctor. And today he's like, hey, but I'm thinking I could do computer science. But why? Because like you see chemistry is very hard, but on the other side, if, if, if we got them to appreciate that, even as you're desiring to become a doctor, if even as you'd be desiring to become an IT specialist, because you are saying IT also has money, I could opt for that. Yet, if we get them to appreciate at the different stages of their lives, time is going to come whereby they can contribute to, to the economy and also impact lives at the different stages they're at, that someone doesn't need to wait when they're 18, 16 years or 20 years for them to impact wherever they are. Because we know people that can do, can do sell uh, uh, poultry feeds, they can do sell uh, uh, eggs, because eggs in Kampala go for about, for about $3, $3 at a tray, uh, $3 a tray of eggs. And if they can do uh, an online sort of delivery, uh, delivery process and interact with more people. So that means, where someone was doing something else, they're now playing into the small, small scales that later on play out in the big economy, GDP, yes. So I feel you're on the right track. I'm very impressed. And uh, yes, I actually, uh, right now we're uh, at the Global Council, we're looking, we're hosting, we're celebrating SMEs and you're one of the businesses I'm recommending because they asked us to recommend certain businesses that have stood up, that are impacting people and we feel have a role to play in where the world is going. So yes, I generously want to stand out and say, please keep it on, it's inspiring. And then also uh, one of the other things we need is can we streamline the different sectors? Because when you present out and pe different people are interacting with the suppliers or uh, different key, uh, key stakeholders, we're going to also need uh, policy makers. Because yes, we might deal with uh, West Africa, but of late, there have been a few issues with uh, inter-country inter, inter trade whereby particular people are blocking out the rest from trading in particular commodities across across the, the regions. And I believe you've had, you must have had this from some of these particular people, but if we could also have these particular policy makers brought on board that if I am transacting in your country and I bring on board a, a, a policy maker and is in position to actually make a decision 
as a result of a point that is being pointed out during, during the expo. This is going to now not just only give them solutions to, but you're going to have a few benchmarks that in the long term, you're going to say, you know, as a result of being able to achieve this particular policy made right from the expo and have been implemented. So yes, that's where I also look at it from. I think very, very interesting points. And like, like you said that if ultimately we don't look at the short term aim, but look at the impact which we are going to make for people's life at large, then that is that is going to make a difference. And I'm very happy when you said that from, from my 10 minute presentation, you actually managed to write 10 pages of notes. So, uh, you know, so uh, they, they, like we be, you know, one, one, of, one of the presentations which we have is called get more from less. So I'm sure that from, so that, that, that shows that, you know, the, that, and it also depends on the person who's absorbing that, you know, that you save some, some, some people, you give them one line and they, you know, write a thesis on that. So I'm definitely, you have that ability and uh, sure. it's, 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 it's a good thing, but so now we, we're talking about, I think you, 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 you spoke a lot about the economy, but what, and today, as we see one of the, the largest hub as far as consumers are concerned. Okay, Africa is one of the largest hub in the world, whether which is a huge population. And if you see the future growth trends, that you know, Uganda, Nigeria, these are these are these are projected to among you you to be among the future growth economies of the planet. You know, so what is what is your economic outlook? Especially, see, there has been some amount of you know. Uh, low sentiment because of the COVID, but I think in the long that COVID is is you know I think everybody understands that COVID is not there for the long term. I think you are on mute, Mr. Dickens. Yes. So mm. Everybody understands COVID is not there for the long term, but then sometimes people tend to get you know depressed and oh what's going to happen next. So what's your outlook? What is how do you see? Where do you see Africa in general? Where do you see Uganda in particular going ahead in the next five years? Um, one, I'd, I'd, uh, I'd start off actually, during when COVID hit, I had lent out chunks of money to people. And uh, given that my wife works in Nairobi, I, I, I was afraid of literally eating depression because there's chunks of money in people. And here was, and I'm thinking through, okay, I have chunks of money out in people. So I set out on a journey to, when I moved to Nairobi during uh, COVID, I, I started looking out for opportunities that's how the business actually was backed, the peace on procures Nairobi. I started looking out for opportunities on how I can play a role into uh, investment in Nairobi. And I've, uh, we've so far done uh, export of fruits and eggs to Nairobi. But from an example that um, I started off just by identifying something that Uganda will have fruits, plenty of them. Some of them literally in the markets are go bad because people literally they have eaten out and they cannot eat anymore and they literally go bad. And yet on the other side, in Nairobi, you, you find the same fruit going for thrice or thrice the amount. It's being sold for in Uganda and it takes two to sometimes three working days for you to get products from Uganda to that other part of the world. So why am I even painting that picture? Because I think uh, Africans have been very comfortable. Uh, sorry to say, but we are very comfortable. We are we 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 want a white man to bring for us the opportunities at the opportunities to us on a silver plate. Yet end of the day, no white man, no white man, no white man can ever build our economies for us. It's it's us that that tomorrow when you produce a child and they are registered as a, they are registered as a Ugandan they are going to play a role into the economy. And uh, this plays out a lot in the few countries I've, I've been to uh, in Africa, whereby uh, if, let me give an example of Aliko Dangote. If Aliko Dangote produced a child, it's gonna be easier for them to transact in business virtue of the uh, transaction relationships their parents have laid out for them. So uh, we as Africans were still best or looking at the individual contributions to our families and we're not looking at what advantage can we play to our country? What advantage can we play to the economy? Because uh, thinking, thinking, thinking on a broader scale that 
Uganda, Uganda is just a small country of the East African community. It's just a small country of the African community. It's just a small country of the world as a globe, but it plays down that the simple person, the simple person I lend too many on the streets of Kampala. And we took, uh, so far we have literally all the ladies uh, that sell hankies on the road, the street vendors. And that little lady who is going to come to you for about uh, for about uh, two hundred dollars, and they can pay back about ten to fifteen dollars every single day. That's the person that is going to contribute to educating their family. One, they're going to contribute to uh, paying the rent wherever they are staying. They're going to contribute to to feeding their homes, to taking these students to schools who, who tomorrow might actually be doctors, they might be lecturers, they might be uh, pilots in the play. But we have left out. We, we are first to run into the cars. We're first to run into uh, the, the luxurious look without us getting even the knowledge within because we have more people, more youth. Actually, in a conversation with my wife, who we are talking that, you know, very many of our African Okay, so uh, I think we as an African continent, uh, one, we, 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 we just need to appreciate our individual roles into, into the economy that uh, even, even that lady, the street vendor, even you as a manager, even you as an, a, a consultant in a particular field, when all of you meet, depending on your different income stream, playing a role onto what is going to be what is going to be the final out, output of the GDP in that particular country. So I feel there's a big opportunity for Africa. One in uh, we have very fertile land, some and uh, untilled, and it's in Uganda where you find uh, I can throw beans outside my my backyard, and after three months they've literally given me uh, seeds or they've given me let, let me say several several beans so uh we we've left the backbone of the different the different communities that if in kampala back then they were uh, dealing in cotton they were dealing in coffee we've we've now looked into people have sold chunks of land to buy a border border uh, that's a tuk-tuk in some of these other regions uh, but that comes down to also our education systems. People are not thinking, people uh, have been put into a particular mindset whereby you have to sit behind a desk for you to for you to earn big money. Yet agriculture is the way to go. Everybody needs to eat even after five hours. Even if you have eaten today, you're going to need the fruit. You're going to need either ginger for you to prevent from COVID or even the lemon. So in every single way. And in Nairobi, at some point, uh, a kilo, a kilo of ginger was going for about uh, for for about uh, 500, 500, 200 Kenyan shillings. So that shows us that, and because we're on demand and they were not readily available, but that shows us that we have a role to play. Everybody has a role to play. And one for you, from a Ugandan perspective, uh, uh, we have very many people that think think of different. Very many people think of different ideas to bring an impact. It's in Uganda where you find everybody has thought of a particular idea. But the biggest issue is one, the, we lack the skill sets. That's number one, the biggest problem we have. Two, we, we, we lack access to finance. Uh, most of these people, by the time you're going to a financial institution for them to give you Either loan, either to fund uh, and from as high as nine to fifteen plus percent. So uh, that's now part of the part of the things that we face on a day to day. And then even some of these particular policies, because right now we we haven't given more tax policies. Not that the good that that's how the economy sustains itself. But I need to see the value. I need to see the value come through that. When, when you're taxing me probably 20 or 15 or 20 percent of whatever I'm earning, I need to see the value in terms of roads that when I'm transporting my goods from the farms to the city, I'm seeing that being replicated out. When you're taxing me for OTT in Uganda, we, we were charged 
just to literally be on Facebook, to be on 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 uh, social media sites. But I need to see we've not gotten ac accountability for for uh, one year's worth of two hundred shillings per person, uh, which is worth billions of shillings in that particular year. So. Uh, one, even the economies have to be, even the heads of these particular places have to be more, uh, they have to be, they have to give feedback, they have to inform that we introduced this particular tax, but it's been channeled towards this, that today COVID, uh, they gave us trillions of money to help curb it when it was in the first phase. How did we handle this money? Because at the end of the day, when I'm, when, when I'm paying for taxes to do certain things, and it's particularly for COVID, it has to have a particular impact that when I walk down the streets, I'm either seeing a hospital being constructed, I'm either seeing a road being either maintained or constructed, I'm seeing a, a market constructed structure. And I know when I bring my tomatoes from probably a farm and I'm just being a middleman, transporting them to a final uh, wholesaler, I know when they get there, they can be refrigerated. They can, I'm going to find the place well clean, sanitized, uh, so those are some of the things that we need to play. And then even in, even the international policies that that if what I want is, to trade across the different countries, across... I think basically, if I can summarize what you're saying is people need to see their money in action. Whether you are applying your yes. money to buy something, yes. like yesterday we spoke about, about value addition. So if I'm paying something, I want value for money. I want to see my money in action. So if I pay a dollar for eggs or tomatoes or for data or anything, I want to see how it works. Similarly, the taxpayers want to see their money in action. And definitely, I think in the current COVID scenario, all the governments worldwide are acting very, very proactively, you know, and definitely because it's, it's in everybody's interest that this, this disaster goes sooner rather than later. And, you know, that one of the things which, which brings me to that, yes, sure, seeing the sure. money in action, Sometimes what happens is that people, when you spend your money, in certain cases, you get you get immediate results. Certain times, that, that results takes time. And one of the things, in certain places, what happens is that if you don't spend, you will tend to lose. And you don't realize that because I didn't spend, that's why yes. I lost. And one of those areas is continual learning and skill development. Yes. Right? Typically, mm. now... As somebody who's there in the skill development industry, and we approach people, say people say, "Oh, we have so much. We don't have money to pay our people's salaries. Do you want us to spend for skill development?" But then, you know, the people don't realize that with the changing, you know, environment around you, as the way of working is changing, the skill development, the way of skills, the new skills need to be acquired. Like now, everything yes. is going digital. The way of working is different. The way the, 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 the supply chains world over are changing. A new normal is emerging. So what is your what yeah. is your input on that? That what is your take? Are people really alive to that? Are people investing on skill development? How important do you think that the role of skill development is in this emerging new normal post COVID? Uh, thank you. I, I think uh, it's 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 going to be a continuum process because we still have COVID for the next two, three years worldwide. Not only, I'm not looking at uh, country level. We still have it uh, curbed for the next, uh, uncurbed for the next two to three years. But the scenario therein is uh, for you as the different markets and the different industri industries keep evolving, it's going to need people to upskill, not only from a place of uh, um, uh, an MBA, but people are going to need to do more additional uh, additional certificates, one, uh, industry-based trainings, and also uh, person, personal development skill programs. Because at the end of the day, even however much the, in the, the company is going to invest in you, it's also going to play a role into how as you as an individual, are you positioned for the information that is going to play to you. Then on the other side, even as a, a skilling program, because uh, let me just give an example from a marketing point of view. In marketing, we have, uh, we have uh, CIM, 
uh, from UK putting out a uh, certification for marketeers across the world. And we also have, under them, we also have uh, 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 CPR. Uh, these are now CIPR. These are now public relations, but it's all under marketing. And then there are other certain, uh, certain qualifications, but the uniqueness is here. Then also digital marketing, because I, right now it's as relevant as anybody can literally breathe. So, but then the uniqueness is that uh, some of these particular uh, skilling programs, you are creating a template for all marketing personnel to fit within their countries. Some of these people, examiners, are people that develop these continents that have never been uh, in these particular countries. So that's now where we're having a scenario whereby I'm doing CIM, but I've not, I've never literally on my local scale. I can't apply the seven Ps. I can't apply the four Ps. Now, that's where at the end of the day that even these particular people that are scaling these particular programs, they're going to need to invest a lot into the data that, okay, we're scaling today about resource. What resource does Uganda have? And how best can Uganda utilize its resources that if I'm the person handling marketing, I know, uh, today we are we're running a particular program in uh, Ilan, and we're trying to while trying to launch a program in Ilan for students at home for the next 42 days uh, issued by the president. And part of what we're looking at is okay when we're doing the pricing, how many parents can actually afford five thousand shillings? That's about uh, one dollar and an eighth. How many parents can actually afford that? And we realized okay. Most, most parents can afford either uh, a thousand shillings or two thousand shillings, but come to five thousand shillings, this is people's earning for a whole day. So if you price it at that, you're going to have very few people that are having to subscribe to their children because after they've subscribed, after they've subscribed, they're going to need the child to go to school. They're going to need a child to go to to go and eat something for breakfast. They're going to need a child to eat lunch. So if they're earning that and then they have to pay for that, for that particular program, it's not going to be relevant. And then also the information interplay that at the end of the day, if you brought this information down, like the resources, we're teaching about resources, but uh, certain people have not tailored it to play within their companies. Do you get me? Hello? Yeah, hi. Yes, yes. And yeah. then also the, the, the pricing, the pricing that out of the pricings they're doing, mostly uh, most of these projects that are running out there, they're running at particular international international uh, international currencies. Very good. But the issue is when when I'm to pay a thousand dollar, a thousand dollars within my economy, what is that going to play? What is it going to play? What is what role is it going to play out? I don't know if you're getting me, but I'm from a place that if it's a thousand dollars and someone is earning about, uh, let's say in Uganda, most most professions, some earn from about uh, five hundred thousand. That's a five hundred thousand to about uh, to about two five ten million. Some people, mm -hmm. but if someone is earning that particular money, mm -hmm. and you are are taking a quarter or a half or even three quarters for a skilling mm. program. Is there a way that this person is going to get the value for that particular program? Okay. Because everybody can issue them a certificate. Everybody can uh, position them with a uh, different, 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 different skills. Because what we're having sometimes is people just go on the internet, read about it, copy paste. And it comes out is going to give you very eloquent, well-spoken position key points, but come down to the actual content. Some of them have never applied this information in their years of expertise, in their years of operation, in their years of uh, being an employee, in their years of being probably a manager at a particular company. So now that's that. 
whatever is being channeled out in the different sectors, it has to be tested. It has to be, it has to be able to bear results that we're not trying uh, try and error. And at the end of the day, we expect results. It has to have foothold that when you try this, mm. it's going to work. It's, you may need to break it down to your particular economy, but it's going to either be able to add value to the economy. It's going to be able to add uh, economic mindset paradigm shift mm. to these particular people that when I walk through a meeting, and it's five minutes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to I'm going to need a pen and paper. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to need I'm not going to need to have a closed book. And I'm like, okay, uh, it makes sense, but I think uh, I can brainstorm on these points. It needs to get me to a place whereby I I need a notebook. I need to sit down and literally reflect word per word. Um, this sort of person whereby even after this conversation, I'm going to go back and reflect on every single conversation I've had. Because at the end of the day, we, 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 time is money. Mm. Every single time we're putting out, it's, it better bring either, either growth, it either impacts someone's life, it's, it's contributing to the economic value in terms of bringing back revenue, or it's playing in a particular way to even my growth. Because I not want to be at the same level for the next five years, the same mindset. So that's what I think we are looking at for these skilling programs. Okay, right. Uh, now the next question that I will I would like to ask that how is uh, Africa and uh, Uganda, other countries in general, coping up with the uh, you know physical to online mode uh, after this uh, COVID scenario? Uh, yes. Uh, I think one from a Ghanaian perspective, it's the way to go. It's uh, you're either joining the internet, you're either joining uh, the digital structures that have been put in place, or your business one not going to re remain relevant because even up to date, most companies are still struggling to remain relevant. Mm. They're struggling to keep their brands. They're, they're struggling to for their customers to even know that they still exist. Because we had a lockdown for over six, six to eight months in Uganda, mm. six to three, six to uh, total lockdown, total lockdown. We had a total lockdown in Uganda, but most customers do not even know if the companies they work they work sourcing products from, and I'm talking from more, more of a, a, a supply perspective. All companies that are supplying or offering particular services are actually still in operation because. Mm everybody uh most people were caught in a place whereby they switched to survival mode that if i have a thousand dollars i'm thinking what can this other a thousand dollars help my family for the next few days for the next few months today it's it's what is playing out in uganda that uh uh most people are holding on to the money because they're like you know what i'd rather remain with whatever i have than me putting it out in the economy and I'm not sure if they're going to put us in a lockdown and my money is vested into something and I'm not able to sustain my family in the, in the, in the, in the process. So uh, one, we, uh, the internet is playing a big role into the digital movement uh, towards businesses and uh, even the skilling, even the employment scale. We having Zoom coming up, we having uh, 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 Teams, we having uh, Skype calls, we having Google meetings. But uh, the other ways that, uh, but it's also phasing out particular entities in the process that where you did a billboard and you're charging me, uh, you're charging me about $300 per month. Now I'm going to think twice because for you, that $300 a month, if I invested it into Google keywords, it's going to one, give me how many people have seen that particular targeting, how many people have seen my ad, how many people have shown interest in coming to me? And how many people have expressed interest in terms of clicking either to my website, clicking in terms to purchase, in clicking either contacting us and leaving the information. And now that's to a business mind. That's what they're looking for, country. Or oh, I'd rather invest people who have invested chunks, gotten loans to invest into billboards, run out of business. 
because in one way they have not they have they either they have been caught in a process of they have not evolved with whatever is going on yes and from an African perspective, I think it's the time where we're going to have more international interaction in terms of currencies and in terms of in terms of uh, business and skill set. Because right now, from wherever you are, you can be able to lecture, you can be able to teach, you can be able to uh, pass on a skill and even certify without even physically interacting with these people. Because the ideal that I need to physically be on my work desk, and at the end of the day eight hours, when I fulfilled either I've been productive all the eight hours or not, and my employer is happy to see me that I've physically come to the office, those times are gone. We're having more people actually investing in more time from wherever they are working from than they did then when they're actually in front of a desk and their employees, their employers can physically see them. So on an African perspective, it's going to play now into what policies are the African leaders putting in place to support these moves, to support these movements. That at the end of the day, when, when I sit on my computer and I'm, I'm, I have a supply company in Kenya and Uganda, I can supply things to the UK, I can supply things to Dubai, I can supply things to South Africa just by a click of, bat, uh, of a button and I get customers across. But how do the policies play into this? That if you are the policy maker in terms of import and export, have you put proper policies that when I choose to start exporting goods out, it's still a win-win situation, both to me, both to my customer and to even the government, you can still earn a particular profit. So uh, it's a time whereby every region is going to grow massively, utilizing what they have locally, but it's also going to see particular businesses close and others open and expand in the process. Yes. And I really liked your point about the billboard going digital. So what was once brick and mortar, now it's digital. And definitely like, I don't know how many people came and saw the physical billboard, which is there on the road. But I definitely know how many people have True. seen my dad on Facebook. So excellent insights and True. thank you very much for your time. And uh, I think we can go on and on, on, on with, you know, with your insights, but uh, we will have opportunities thank in the you. future. And uh, yes, thank you. Very, very grateful. I think we have the expo going on for another day. So wish all of you yes. all and enjoy the expo. And uh, we'll keep thank keep you digitally, if not physically. And digitally, it's easier. Yes. So we'll be we will be in touch more often, inshallah. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank, thank you very you much. Grateful for joining. Thank, thank you. you very yeah. much. See you. See you later on.